won uh, the Canadian Association of Physics Awards for Excellence in Teaching in High School. And that is Edward, teacher at Terry Fox Secondary. Thank you. Thank you. This summer I had the pleasure of going to Switzerland and France on a wonderful trip uh, that was supported by several people here, uh, Patricia Gartland, Gerald Strong, Rob Zambrano, all wrote letters of recommendation for uh, an award uh, that sent me to Switzerland. Uh, it's a huge experiment, in fact it's the largest experiment that humans have ever conducted by far in any field. This is a ring that is 27 kilometers around and it's full of magnets, about 10,000 of them, and they just accelerate protons to very close to the speed of light. And then, of course, what did they do? Just like children, smash them together, see what happens. <laughs> and it creates many, many particles. Each collision of two protons creates about 700 subparticles. I'm sure you've all heard of protons, neutrons, and electrons, right? But there's many, many more dozens, in fact. There's muons, there's gluons, there's mesons, bosons, and a whole zoo. They actually call it the particle zoo. And so when you smash them together, you get to see all these other particles. And a lot of them we don't know a lot about, and we're trying to find new ones like dark matter, dark energy, all these crazy words, neutrinos, things like that. And so it's just the biggest, coolest thing a, phys a physicist could ever do. It's kind of like our mecca, our Disneyland. <laughs> to short video, to explain to you what they do. <clears throat> That facility has been around for many decades since the 50s, and you saw a number of synchros, cyclotrons that they accelerate the protons through to finally go through several different bigger and then bigger and then bigger into the LHC, which is called the Large Hadron Collider, and that's where we've got the biggest energy collisions in the world. And this here is a detector called Atlas. It is huge, it is seven stories tall, and it's just a big camera, a big 3D camera, and they try to detect the particles that come out of these collisions. And then they have to process it with large amounts of data. And in fact, um, oh, so I wanted to acknowledge uh, the Canadian Association of Physicists and the Institute of Particle Physics for, for sending me on this trip. So every year they send one Canadian to Switzerland and uh, I got to go this year, it was amazing. And they've been doing it for like 25 years. And so I just wanted to acknowledge them. Uh, they put together a big group of teachers, it's called the High School Teacher Program. So other teachers from other countries like myself get to come and get together and learn physics together. So this is 44 teachers from 32 different countries. And, and we just all get to pool our ideas in physics. We're all high school physics teachers. Um, so we would sit in lectures with the best minds in the world and get updated on the latest in the accelerator technology, the latest in the particle physics, the latest in um, detectors, they're updating them all the time. And so their main goal is to bypass the universities because normally a physics teacher would have to learn physics in the university, then go train to teach and then teach, but the new physics is happening all the time. So they kind of shortcut it right back to the top teachers. And so we, they can get their newest information to students as fast as possible. I mean, like I said, doing this for 25 years. Um, so this is one of the coolest moments of all. I was down 100 meters in beside the LHC, the big tunnel, 
And there's so much magnetism needed to get the, the protons to go around in a circle like that. that um, I held a string of paper clips and it goes sideways because of all the magnetism. So the LHC is like sort of behind that wall. So um, they're trying to answer a lot of big uh, questions there. The physicists will happily know that we only know maybe 5% of what's out there in physics. All the things you see and can touch, that's like 5%. The rest, we don't know. It's dark energy, it's dark matter, it's crazy. Uh, they're trying to answer them, like why is gravity so weak? It should be stronger, they think, and so why is it so weak? Why is there not enough antimatter? And they thought there should be the same amount of matter, antimatter at the Big Bang. There just isn't, there's all this matter. And we don't know where the antimatter went. So they're actually created there, and they study. They're actually trying to make antimatter, and then they drop it to see if gravity is the same for matter and antimatter. Uh, neutrinos are this really mysterious particle that they're trying to figure out more. They go through almost anything. You've got about 10 trillion of them going through you every, se every second right now. And they don't interact with things. They go even right through the entire Earth without touching an atom, uh, the vast majority of them. So they're like, what's that all about? <laughs> um, so that is uh, the Large Hadron Collider. I wasn't in there because the experiment's actually run. Nobody's in there. It has to be cooled down to like four Kelvin for it to work, so it's extremely cold, and you wouldn't be allowed to go in there. That's a big mural. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, this one, uh, this is the CMS detector. There, there are four in total. Uh, this is about five stories in, in height. That's to scale, uh, but it's not the real thing. <laughs> it's down, that's down in there. Um, so that's, again, a two scale mural that we were checking out just before I went down. Um, one of the interesting things about CERN is the World Wide Web was created there to deal with the data. When the, when the particles collide, it creates an enormous amount of data, and they have to um, use multiple computers around the world to deal with it. The computer you see on the right hand side, that is one of the first two computers that was the web. <laughs> first two, it starts the web. And uh, so they kept it there. You can, it's right out in the open in one of the display plays. You can touch it, you can feel it. And uh, so that's one of their claims to fame. Uh, another one is that they discovered the Higgs boson. You might have heard of it in the news about 11 years ago. Um, it was a big particle that gives things mass. It really explains how things get this property called mass. And it was predicted for many years, and it was, in fact, the reason they built the whole thing was to at least find the Higgs boson and they hoped for more. And so when it was announced in 2012, it was done so in CERN's theater, which I'm I'm sitting in, and on the right, there's a, a movie we were watching in the theater uh, that was happening in the theater. It was this kind of whole world circle thing where Peter Higgs, um, he was, they announced the discovery of it officially. He ended up winning the Nobel Prize, and he was sitting in the same seat that I was sitting in, <laughs> watching the movie that he was winning the, you know, anyway, it was kind of a cool, surreal moment. Um, so if you're interested in this kind of stuff, there's a great documentary. It's award-winning. It's called Particle Fear. You want to check it out later? It's on YouTube. Well, I just, yeah, it was a big moment. Big moment in physics, one of the biggest in our lifetime. Another great thing I got to do was have like, one day off when I was there, it was quite busy, but um, I went to Bern, which is about a 90 minute train ride or across the next Swiss countryside to uh, Bern, Switzerland, where Einstein lived when he had his miracle year. That was the year he uh, had four amazing papers that were changing physics, he won a Nobel Prize for one of them. And uh, another one, a different one, was regarding that clock tower that you see in the picture on the right. That's where he got the idea for special relativity. He figured if he was in a train going away from that clock tower at the speed of light, you wouldn't see the clock change, it would freeze. And so that's what blew his mind, and he said, oh, it's time that's relative. Time is not this immutable property of the universe that just ticks along for everybody the same. It's different if you're moving faster, if time goes slower. And it even changes with gravity. People on the high, the top floor of a building are having time to tick a little bit faster than people on the bottom floor of the building because you're closer to gravity and that affects the flow of time, believe it or not. That's general relativity. So that was a fun trip for me. And just the meaning of connections. Um, this fellow here is uh, from Mexico. He's a really well-known professor. He travels the world and teaching physics over pals now. And he's here to help me add Mexico to my next project. I'll get to that in a second. And then just all these other amazing physics teachers that I met, they are now part of, oh, this is almost a yes. So I don't know if you know that we're doing a STEAM program at Terry Fox. Uh, it's a brand new program, sort of a school within a school. 
And it kind of led to this solar max project because I've got the same kids year after year. And I thought, oh my God, there's a big eclipse coming next year in April. And I want to really bring kids to it. And I knew that I would have the same kids one year to the next. And that's never happened in my career before. So the STEAM program was a big part of this. So this is, project has been you know, accepted by SciStarter here. And the goal is to have many observers across the continent observing animal behavior in zoos, aquariums, and we can have lots of students. I'm in my head, 10,000 students. I don't know if I'll get there, but like, I've got several whole schools that are going to, to places, um, up to about 1,000 maybe. Uh, but I'd like to see schools in Mexico, students there. Uh, all through the States, it's going to go over through Dallas, up through Indianapolis, Buffalo, and then back to Canada, New Brunswick, Toronto, near Toronto Zoo as well. So I've got people going to Toronto Zoo. So I've been building this international network of teachers students to go observe animal behavior in zoos and see what they do. Um, previous studies have shown about 75% of animals go crazy during the process. They do weird stuff. So um, we're going to build on, on that research with those lead researchers from the University of North Carolina to lead the research. And eventually, uh, the goal is to have the students be published uh, scientists at age 16. Yeah, the next project. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Almost forgot it. You're falling to Columbo, aren't you? Just like Columbo. <laughs>